former New Jersey governor, Chris Christie, yesterday joined the, you know, basically tally of conservatives saying that it's crucial to restart the United States economy, even if that means losing thousands more lives to COVID-19 as a result. Now, we've had, of course, comments from other prominent lawmakers across the country that have had similar musings, right, statements that have come under fire from a lot of people out there that are basically thinking in a different way. So in an interview with the Daily DC podcast, CNN's Dana Bash asked about the new internal government projections that nearly 3,000 people will be dying daily by June 1st, just under a month. He answered that with this, saying that people are, quote unquote, going to have to swallow the idea of losing thousands of more lives as social distancing restrictions ease in several states. Another model often cited by the White House this week revised fatality projections to more than 134,000 by August 4th, almost double the previous estimate. Now, Christie claimed the economic devastation. And uh, J.D., you're going you're gonna to you're gonna attest to this, too, because you, this, is, this is something that you've talked about a lot. Uh, claim the economic devastation as caused by widespread stay-at-home measures due to the pandemic was equally sad. Of course, everybody wants to save every life they can, says Christy, but the question is, towards what end ultimately? Are there ways that we can thread the middle here to allow that there are going to be deaths and there are going to be deaths no matter what? So this gets to the, the statement and the perception, right, that we're going to have an issue with COVID-19 anyway, right? We understand there's going to be fatalities, but there is this kind of measurement of the fatalities that you have from a global pandemic, right, that are, you know, in essence, preventable as opposed to uh, or preve directly preventable given that it's a very deadly virus, right? And then there's also the economic impact. And what this is going to have as far from a mental health standpoint, as far as suicides in the country and from an economic standpoint, right, as far as bank, people's bank accounts or being, you know, basically losing their, well, their livelihoods. Joblessness. And yes, and, and homelessness and, and potential homelessness. So it's kind losing, of a clash, though, right, J.D.? Losing your health, We're having an issue losing here. Your health insurance. Exactly. I mean, you've got 32 million people right now that are that are unemployed across the United States as of right now. That number, that number is going up every single day. So it's, a, it's not going to go down But it's a balancing act. Well, but of course, yeah, you, you have to compromise between between you know, death toll and economic carnage. You have, you, have to find a, you have to find a nice way to, and, and as, as well as maintaining morale while all this is going on, which is what mm -hmm. President Trump has had to do from the jump. So I, I totally agree with what Chris Christie is saying, and I think he's saying it in a much... Uh, in a much softer tone, whereas Bill O'Reilly said, you know, these people were on their last legs. Dan Crenshaw said, said, you know, there's 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 more important things than living. You know, this, I, in my opinion, Chris Christie, and you can call him Beach Boy, you can call him whatever you want to call him, but Chris Christie. Well, is, I don't is, call him that, but is, our, our is, esteemed is, host Brian he does, does, he does right? is, is making a legitimate scientific approach to this, which is which is, hey, this virus and this virus is spreading. I mean, we've been in quarantine for 60 days. And there's already 8,000 cases just this morning. Well, there you was, can say it's there spreading. Was, there were, there was 25,000 cases yesterday. I mean, this, this yeah. virus is still spreading. People are still dying. And we, do we really know how many people are dying? I've seen so many stories out there on, on Twitter, Twitter and Facebook and on the Internet that are saying, hey, you know, my, my grandfather passed away and he was, he was in hospice. But he he was he already had – he probably had three weeks to a month to live. Right. And he contracted COVID. He died. But he was probably going to die regardless because he was in hospice. But they're calling it a COVID death. And then you've got the hospitals that are, get, are getting paid money to list COVID as a cause of death. They're getting paid money to use ventilators. They're getting paid a 20% premium in the case of a, in, in an uninsured patient to use ventilators to treat these people. But then you've got ventilators in, in New York City. They, they said they needed 50,000 ventilators. Well, they didn't. They needed about eight. But 90% of people that have been placed in those ventilators have died. So there's, there's actually a chance, a strong chance, that using a ventilator is actually hurting the, the COVID patients that have the very, very compromised immune systems to start. So there's, there's you know, all these different things going on, and you really don't know how many deaths occurred from COVID, but you also don't know what the mortality rate is because, yes, we're testing a lot of people, and that's, and that's fine. And you look at California. California actually has tested 750,000 people. That's more than about 85% 80, of the country is out there. Well, J.D., you can't make, and, 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 JD, no, you no, can't and, make and, this case that testing is up to the levels no, it needs I'm, to be. Absolutely no, not. I, but I'm saying, Chris, like all, all they not. have is they have 56,000 positive cases. 
that's less than since, that's less than eight percent positive I testing rate. I understand. That means there's gonna, not a lot of asymptomatic cases out there. I understand you're going to use the numbers we, 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 to no, support well, of course, your case. Uh, of course, I'm going but to. It's not because it makes sense. But but you're t- but you're, it's, this is this isn't New Jersey, Chris. We're talking about Chris in, in New Jersey, you've got three hundred and fifty thousand tested. In 160,000 cases, that's you a 40. Use the that, that, that's a 40 percent positive. As of course, that supports your of argument. Of course you can. Terrible. Of course you can. If no, you if, can't. The, the if, if the places what no, it should be. no, if the places that are being tested are the, it, are, are, are have, have the dense have dense populations, then yes, you can what? use those numbers. No, you can't. Yes, of course you it, can. It, they are severely because in, in rural areas, the virus is not going to spread as fast. In spread out areas, the virus is not going to spread as fast. Any, but, but if any, you're testing, if right. you're testing areas that have dense populations, then the chance is, and, and we've been in lockdown for X amount of days, then asymptomatic cases are going to get over their cases. But the, the virus is not going to spread to rural areas or spread out areas if you're testing the correct areas. So I would say that, yes, testing 750,000 people in California is very very important and that's and that's a lot of testing brian pink said it wasn't a lot of testing that is a lot of testing we've done almost eight million tests which is two and a half percent of the population in 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 a month in a month and a half but i would argue that the more important test is the antibody test because that test will tell you that someone who is like hl greenberg who was on the show yesterday that that test will tell you what it'll tell you that you had the virus you recovered from the virus which means that you did not die from the virus and that means the mortality rate is dropped which is the most important we because right now the the narrative is that 6 to 8% of people that get this virus die of it and that is just not the case it's not even close to the case and it's being used to put these numbers out like 2.2 million people are, are, are going to die of the virus etc cetera, etc cetera. well if 20 percent of the country has has this virus like in new york they're estimating that 25 percent of the country has had the virus and recovered from the virus that doesn't include the active cases so that's three million people out of, out of almost eight eight million people in new york have had the virus or okay. in, or, or have right. the virus we're getting a little bit off no we're no, here. no yeah because but, you're, but, talking, you're, you're talking about numbers that doesn't have anything to pertain to whether or not the country it, both sides of the ideology that Chris Christie's talking and what Chris Christie was bringing up regarding, you know, the the impact of the country. You're bringing we, up a lot of numbers that are there. Look, I, I, I get that you're a numbers guy, but we're, we're, we're trying to discuss well, you, whether you, or you not have you have to be a numbers Chris person Christie, and you have why Chris Christie is and saying you have to saying. apply reality well, with data. You can't just listen to what to well, what you're being told right now through various biased outlets well, for information. Well, you listening to people that are in the know and that are public health of, of, experts of and course. have actual numbers and have actual facts as opposed to, you know, individuals that may be, you know, skewing numbers or, you know, have an ideology or, a, 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 you know, an agenda when it comes to whether or not well, what, what whether or not they want to either open the company up or not open the company up. Well, when, what Chris Christie is speaking to is that kind of, you know, moral dilemma. Yeah, of, there's a moral of, choice. Of, 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 uh, how do you strike that balance between – uh, people's health, de- you know, deaths, et cetera, right. and, of course, the very important need to get the economy going. And he was actually – we do have a piece of audio here, Chris and J.D. He was asked by CNN's Dan Abash on this podcast, what would you say, if you were president of the United States, what would your message be to the people? The message is that the American people have gone through significant death before. We've gone through it in World War I. We've gone through it in World War II. Um, we have gone through it um, – and we've survived it. We sacrificed those lives. We sent our young men during World War II over to Europe, out to the Pacific, knowing, knowing that many uh, of them would not come home alive. And we decided to make that sacrifice because what we were standing up for was the American way of life. In the very same way now, we have to stand up for the American way of life. That's Chris Christie, former New Jersey governor. Now, look, up to, well, he's comparing to it your to, point, he's comparing J.D. It to war is what he's comparing. Yes, he's comparing it to war. The sacrifice that soldiers have made in yes. wars. And it's, uh, it's, 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 it's not the same thing, but, but for the sake of argument, I want to get back to J.D. Because, J.D., look, he's also – Chris Christie has also gone along the same, same lines you have when he talks about suggesting keeping the elderly, right, and those who have compromised well, immune systems absolutely. at home and limiting large public it, it, gatherings – like concerts, sporting events, you know, also while, but, but while letting or, those of us who are younger or healthier or not necessarily in the roots group to go back to work. Right. Or, 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 okay. limit, or limiting those events or asking those people to be conscious of the fact that they are high risk and to not attend those events while keeping them open for everybody else. I'm saying, yes, op- open up the economy, but make sure that, you know, if you want to wear a mask, you can wear a mask. If you want to have PPE available, if you want to have hand sanitizer, because it's going to be everywhere. I mean, every single place you go to for the next 10 years is going to have hand sanitizer, right? I mean, hand sanitizer is, is going to be a, very, a major natural you know, nat- uh, natural resource that's, that's going to be just necessary for all the places that, you know, when, when you're out, you're going to see hand sanitizer. 
But yeah, ask those who are high risk to not go to these events because they know that they're high risk. But you can't be, and it's it's not even a matter of inconveniencing anymore. It was. It started out as inconveniencing. Now it's literally ruining people's lives. And you have people that that are not going to work that are gonna that are gonna lose their jobs, or in some cases, they're getting paid so much money right now, not doing anything that when they when when that stops in two or three months, they're yeah, that's be, not that that's not they're, the majority. They're, of they're, people. That's, a small that's a lot of people. people it's a small but, number. But, but, JD. But in relation to the rest of the country, but they're going to be they're going to be number. angry and they're not going to want to go back to don't work. Pre- don't present it like it's some some majority of the people that are out there that are able to just I'm sit just on their saying, ass at and, home. And, 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 yes, there are there are some. And the only reason here in Las Vegas, you're right, it's a hospitality right. well, industry, especially in the service industry in general. And obviously, I have I have some familiarity with that. So there are people I can tell you, but don't act like it's some type of majority or some type of you know. Let me tell you a story. Most so my, my father, in my, my father, yeah. my father knows a guy who drives a truck, right. and he made sixteen eighty an hour before this. Mm-hmm. He is now making seventeen hundred and ninety dollars a week. Exactly. Yeah, there are situations I mean, like that. Yeah. There absolutely are. Uh, by the way, that, that's almost a fifty thousand dollars. That's almost a, a two and a half mm-hmm. yearly pay increase. That's unheard of, Chris. That that just doesn't happen. You you have people right now that are literally getting money that that have that have applied for small business loans and they're just getting money from the government just sent to them with with they don't have to pay it back. There's there's no there's no expectation for anything behind it. I mean that's where things are at. There's there's yeah, such, a, there's such a mas- stimulus plan. There's such yeah. a mash. I mean in, in Nevada yeah, b- before a, before the stations before the stations basically closed the Palms and other casinos. Right. The, Nevada was a month behind on unemployment. Mm-hmm. We're going to be about six weeks behind. Moving forward, and and you've got a roughly two hundred thousand people in the state that have still not gotten unemployment. There, there are stories all over. You look at Steve. Absolutely, yeah. There are issues, there issues with the unemployment in Nevada. Twitter yes. page. There's people that are saying, "Hey, I applied well, on March 17th for for unemployment, and I still haven't got. I haven't even got a meeting set up yet." That's yeah. happening all over the country, not just in Nevada. We're talking about Chris Christie. He went on a podcast, a DC podcast, with Dana Bash, and uh, he's pushing for America to reopen. And uh, when asked uh, about about that, he said whether people will be able to live with the CDC proje- projection of 3,000 deaths per day, he said, hey, look, they're going to have to.